what's going on you guys it's your huggable hipster here and welcome back to today's video so i have some articles i have some I, i've had way too much caffeine today but i have some articles that we're gonna go into it's gonna be really interesting to say the least because whenever i saw that people were sending me these topics and sending me these rather not just ideas but all of these different types of things to go over i was like oh my god article overload so before we get into today's main main topics there's just a couple of things that i want to mention in regards to gaming news one of them being that tell me why is free for pride month so if you guys want to snag it up for free it is there for you guys. I'll leave a link down in the description below where you guys can find it and snag it up and get it and play it. So I have a homework assignment for you guys. I want you all to read the article that I'm going to mention right now. It'll be in the description. It's very, very good, very thorough, very in depth. And it's called why I started streaming video games on Twitch at the age of 43. It's very real. It's very personable and I love the way that this is written so much. I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of a taste of it and then I want you guys to read it on your own and report back to me your thoughts and what you all think of it. It states first off, like so many things in life, I began as a daft experiment. I loved learning new stuff and over the course of my 43 years I've tried all sorts. Some things have stuck like comedy, running, and having kids. Some haven't like kung fu, olives, and holidays in Germany. To be honest, I thought that live streaming games on Twitch would fall into the latter category. Very fun style of writing. It's an opinion piece obviously so you're going to get that really like just inside look into a person's life. It's an overall just really sweet piece and it's, I don't know, it's, it's humbling to read those kinds of pieces sometimes where you get to read the perspective of the other person and it's, it, it's really nice. So recommended piece, go read that, check it out, let me know what you guys think. And let's next get into some PS5 news where it states in the header up here, there's loads of interesting info in Sony's PlayStation Investor Relations document, numbers, growth, vectors, oh my. Now it states here in the article that at the beginning, Sony mentions it's building our biggest ever platform with PlayStation 5 and it's working to ensure our longest ever tail with the PS4. PS5 have delivered PlayStation's highest ever launch sales with 7.8 million units sold as of the end of Sony's last financial year ending March 2021. For context, PS4 sold 7.6 mil in the same time frame, PS3 sold 3.6, and PS2 sold 1.4, and the PS1 sold 700,000. PS4 has 45% console market according to Sony. With PS5, it's targeted over 50%. To this end, Sony points to the favorable demographics that show to ensure PS5 is a massive of success. It reveals a growing interest in PlayStation gaming among women, with proportion among women among console ownership increasing from 18% with the PS1 to 41% with the PS5 and the PS4. I love how it's... <laughs> I love how it says here that it reveals a growing interest in PlayStation gaming among women. I mean, that's really interesting to show. I don't think I've ever seen a stat that really blatantly says there's been an increase in gaming among women. And I really love that. That's really, really, really cool. So many more women coming out of their shell and saying, hey, I like being a gamer, or I like playing this game, or I like doing that. And it's so cool to see. So please, women, keep coming out of your shell and playing games because we need more of you. <laughs> Next up in gaming news, Valve could be making their own console according to data miners. Now I'm seeing everybody and their mom make a new console nowadays. We've had the Google Stadia, which how are they doing by the way? Haven't heard much from Google Stadia. Now stay tuned in the article that there's new evidence that Valve is interested in getting back into console gaming, although not quite in the way anyone previously imagined. You might recall a few weeks ago that Valve's Gabe Newell made a strange statement about whether or not Steve would be porting any new games to consoles in the future. The answer was that you'll get a better idea by the end of this year, and I don't think the answer is what you'd expect. What exactly he meant by this is still unclear, but it makes a lot more sense in the context of new rumors about Valve make it, making its own console. One thing that I'm really interested to see is if this is the console that makes or breaks the gaming universe, because we have the Xbox, we have the PS5, we have handheld consoles like the Switch, soon Switch Pro, but we don't have really a game console that has re-innovated and rethought the market or reinvented the wheel for that matter. So if this console, this <laughs> supposed console, because you guys know how much I do not like speculation, it's kind of like a ball of fire. It keeps going and creates momentum and creates hype and creates this 
this possible catastrophe that could make or break something, i.e. the news and the hype surrounding Cyberpunk 2077. There was hype surrounding that, but we all know what happened with that launch, unfortunately. I just hope that the hype that is going to be surrounding this will be something that is valuable and worth people's time, because at the end of the day, people are putting their hard-earned money into a possible console that could be upwards of almost $1,000. That's not what the console would cost, I'm just estimating a price since the fact that we have so many consoles that are hundreds of dollars. Xbox Series X is 500, the Xbox Series S is 300, and goes for the same prices of the PS5 digital and hard copy version. The Switch Pro is probably going to cost upwards of the same price considering the fact that it is probably going to be an even beefier version of the regular Switch that we have now, the Switch Lite $199. So we're dealing with hundreds of dollars here. We're dealing with so much money. and. If this new console comes into play as something that is a potential game changer, <laughs> no pun intended, it could be something that changes the way we game. I don't know, it's just a hunch of mine. I'll bring something up really quickly before we get into our final beefy topic that we're going to be discussing is Game UK will swap your old console for an Xbox Series S for as little as $40. Special trade and deal is available at stores until June 14th. So get going. And lastly, in gaming news, we are going to go into Final Fantasy Director. Console's long reign will end once 5G becomes standard. This was interesting. I gotta admit, I can't wait to hear what you guys think of this entire article once you guys have read it and report back to me. I feel like, I feel like I'm in a company where I'm asking people to report back to me by 5 p.m. with the latest intel. <laughs> oh, there, sir. Do you have the latest intel on the database that I've asked for? Not yet, but I'll get it right back to you, she. Just like back in the day, gangsters with like, you know, their pants up to their noses, you know, smoking cigars. Now it states here in the article that once 5G becomes a global standard, there will definitely come a time when we can transfer images to any device. Players can enjoy a high quality gaming experience on any device by not being tied to a gaming hardware or TV monitor. We're definitely heading in that direction and I don't think the coronavirus will slow this shift. Yoshida also muses that with home consoles, people need to sit in front of a TV turn the power on, and wait for the hardware to start, which is a time-consuming affair. I take, even if we do get 5G, unless mobile games can feature controls that feel as natural as physical controllers, there will always be people who prefer consoles. Just having a device dedicated to games means that the hardware can and will be maximized just for that, which in turn equates to better gaming experiences. This is actually a statement I think everyone can associate with where it states that, and of course just having a dedicated device to games means that the hardware can, can and will be maximized just for that. The thing is, is that having a PC versus having um, a dedicated hardware just for gaming it really depends on the person, to be completely honest, okay? If you PC game, that's great, and I love PC games. Indie games on PCs are just the bee's knees, okay? They're absolutely incredible. But having a dedicated hardware just for a game, that way you can, you know you're going to run it at the maximum capacity that's going to be run, it's really great knowing that and having that assurance. But I think so many people, uh, you know, they don't understand how fast technology moves and it's really interesting to see that this could be reality. You know, consoles could potentially be a thing of the past with the cloud gaming and how fast things are approaching in that aspect. So, I don't know, it could go either way. It could be that, hey, once 5G approaches that you really don't need a console to play, but also there's that that want and desire to, phys to physically have a controller in your hands and play a game and, you know, feel that, you know, the vibration when you attack a certain character or something like that. It's something that is undeniable and it's an aspect of a gaming that all of us cling to. So will consoles go? Possibly. I'm not sure. But it is a possibility within the future. I don't know. That's my thoughts on it. Well, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts on that, especially what you guys think in regards to consoles. Do you guys think that it's over for consoles? Do you guys think that we are heading into an age where a console is more of a collector's item instead of an actual need for a gamer? Let me know your thoughts. Hey you guys, that is it for me for this episode of The Casual Nerd. If you all like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Ooh, that's a lot of content. Stay casually nerdy, you guys, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye, you guys.